Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Indizor Education. Um, well, it's time to solve a few trigonometric inequalities. Um, I did have some introductory lecture about uh, basic trigonometric inequalities like uh, sine of x less than a. Uh, so now let's just solve some problems using certain methodology which uh, might really be very helpful. So, I have three problems. Uh, they're not really difficult, but uh, there are certain calculations which I hope I will not get lost in. Okay, the problem number one. Tangent of x plus cotangent of x less than or equal to a. All right, so the first complication which strikes our eye is that it's not just simple tangent less than something. It's some of two different trigonometric equations. Some of them, we uh, each part we can actually solve. Tangent is less than something, than something and cotangent is less than something. That, that's okay. How about their sum? And what kind of a function is the sum of tangent and cotangent? Um, just to better understand what this is all about, I prefer to draw a graph. So let me just think about the graph of this particular function. So. Um, this is, uh, let's say, from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. I know the tangent is monotonic, and it looks like this. That's our tangent. Now, the cotangent is monotonic on 0 to pi, right? So it's like this, and it's decreasing. And similarly, here we will have minus pi, so it's this, right? Now, I would like to have some common uh, period of periodicity, interval of periodicity, so I will choose from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. So let me just wipe this out so it does not disturb us, and this. And let's sum them together. Now, obviously, uh, the minus pi over 2 and 0 and pi over 2 are asymptotes because in this point, uh, tangent is uh, going to infinity. At this point, cotangent goes to some infinity, whatever it is. And uh, at this point, again, tangent is equal to infinity. So these are asymptotes, minus pi over 2, 0, and pi over 2. Now, at this point, they're both of them the same. And what happens then? Then one function goes to infinity, and another goes to 0. So basically, we are adding something to this, and it will go to this way. And on this side, from this point, it will be exactly the same, but it's the tangent which will go to infinity, so the function goes this. So my total graph would look like this in this case. This is my sum. Now, similarly, on the left from the zero, uh, this both are negative, so the sum will be like this, and then it goes to negative infinity. So my graph would be like this. Okay. Now these are points. They are right in the middle, by the way, between zero and pi over two. It's um, pi over four, actually, which is forty-five degrees. And tangent and cotangent are equal to are equal to one, so their sum is equal to two. So this is looks like this is a two, and this is minus two corresponding. But this one will make sure actually that this is really true. But in any case, I wanted to have a feeling of what actually the graph of this function um, represents. Now, if I would like to have less than or equal to a, well, it depends. If a is between these two, then the bottom part will be completely inside this interval. If it will be below two, I will have two different intervals, left and right. 
and it will be above two, uh, I mean below minus two. But if, if it will be above plus two, I will have uh, the whole branch of these guys and piece of this plus piece of that on the other side of the uh, of, of the intersection. So it all depends on where uh, y is equal to a straight line intersects this graph. So in this case, like I just draw, it's greater than 2. Now, all this part would be part of this solution, well, except 0, of course, where it's not defined. And on the right, uh, from the right part, uh, it would be on this side. Again, not including the pi over 2. So that's basically my general approach to solving this particular inequality. Now let's do it analytically. Now, again, we have the problem, tangent and cotangent, and we don't like it. However, we do know that cotangent is 1 over tangent, right? So what I have here is tangent of x plus 1 over tangent of x uh, less than or equal to a. Now, that's a little bit easier, but not that easy yet. Now, obviously, I have to exclude from all the solutions where the tangent is undefined or the tangent is equal to zero because the cotangent is undefined. So basically, it goes to x not equal to zero, pi over two, pi minus pi over two, etc. So basically, we can say that it's pi over two times n where n is any integer number. So these are prohibited um, values, and we should really exclude them from all the solutions. Now, after this is excluded, I can multiply by tangent of x, because it's not equal to 0 now, since we excluded these values. And what I will have? I will have tangent square x plus 1 less than a tangent of x, right? Or tangent square of x minus a tangent of x plus 1 less than or equal to 0. Now, let's call tangent of x by some letter z, some variable. Now, this is, in terms of v, this is a quadratic equation. Uh, quadratic inequality, so, right? And we know how to solve this quadratic inequality. Because graphically speaking, any quadratic inequality can be represented as what? As a parabola. In this case, it's uh, this way. So depending on where exactly are uh, solutions to the corresponding equality, where the whole left part is equal to zero. Solution to this are all these values of argument in between these two points, right? Because that's where the whole parabola goes beyond, uh, below zero. So let's solve this equation. We will find what v's uh, are represented, uh, are representing the, the solutions to the corresponding equation. So if I have equations equal to zero, v squared minus a v plus 1 is equal to 0, then solutions are 2a plus minus square root a square minus 4, right? That's what the first and second are. That's the solutions. And our condition when it's less than or equal to 0, it actually means from that with a minus to that with a plus. So in between these two values, my quadratic uh, uh, polynomial is less than 0, right? So we have solved the corresponding equation, find solutions, and in between these two, our since uh, the coefficient at v squared is 1, so the parabola goes upwards. Uh, and in between these two solutions, it's below the zero level. So what we have 
um, actually reduced our original inequality uh, is that tangent of x should be uh, should basically should be greater than this particular expression, but less than this particular expression. So we have reduced one particular uh, uh, trigonometric inequality, reduced to a combination of two, to the union of these two conditions. Right? Well, that's easy. Because we know what to do in this case, because we can solve each one of them and then take the union. Um, what I would like to add, it's very clearly visible here that A should be uh, at least 2 by uh, modulus. Uh, it should be either greater than 2 uh, or less than minus 2, because otherwise my uh, expression under the square root would be negative and there would be no solutions. So solutions exist only if A is greater there, uh, than 2 or less than minus 2, which basically corresponds to whatever I was just talking about, right? OK, now, um, how to solve these guys, OK? If I would like to solve this one, the left part, so tangent is greater than some value. Now, the tangent is this, so if some value is wherever it is, so it's greater than, so it should be greater than arc tangent, right? So solution to the left part is x is greater or equal than uh, arc tangent. of this guy, right? This is minus. That's solution to this one. Now, solution to this one is x is less than or equal to arc tangent of a plus minus 4 divided by 2. Now, and obviously, in both cases, we should not really go beyond the our interval where we are looking for solutions. So if x is greater than this one, uh, then it should be less than or equal to pi over 2. And in this case, it should be greater or minus pi over 2, right? So whenever a is greater than uh, 2 by absolute value, we basically have this particular type of equations, uh, of inequalities, which we have to combine together into some kind of a solution, right? All right, so um, what we can say is the following. If A is somewhere here, then um, above 2, then we can um, say the following. Um, these two points represent um, arc tangent of a minus square root of uh, a square minus 4. Let's call it P and Q. This is P and Q. So this is, um, it's not really P, it's our, tang uh, our, our tangent of P and our tangent of Q, right? So um, in this particular case, so what we have is our solutions are 
all of these guys, all the negative except uh, except minus pi over two and minus uh, and except zero because that's where it's not defined. And then from zero to arctangent of, uh, of of this particular expression of p. So let's call it p. Uh, let's call it. So we will have from minus pi over 2 uh, x to 0, except we don't have equals, obviously. And then we have from 0 to including arc tangent of this expression, which I call p, but anyway, it's a minus square root of a square minus 4 over 2. And in addition to that, we have another we have another interval from um, arc tangent of a plus square root of a square minus four over two. pi over 2. So that's what we have, right? Completely this thing, that's this. Then this piece, oh, no, no, it's not before that, it's in between these things, so I'm wrong. So we have to combine these two together. So it's not to the left and to the right. It's in between, actually. So it should be from minus x to plus arctangent of a plus square root of a square minus 4 over 2. So we have to combine these two together, right? So that's what we have. So this is exactly the same as whatever I put here, except I apply these particular restrictions. No pi over 2 and no 0. That's why we did this. Now, if it's less than minus 2, I will have correspondingly from uh, minus pi over 2 so this is for a is greater than or equal to 2. Now, if I have um, a is less than or equal to minus 2, um, I will have two pieces from here. The one from minus pi over 2 to arctangent. So minus pi over 2x to including arc tangent of this thing and uh, and this piece from the intersection to zero from arc tangent of a plus square root of a square minus four over two x not including zero. Right? Not sure which is plus and which is minus. Let's just think about it. If A is negative, then this E is more negative, right? Than this. So that's correct, right? So it's two intervals here. Now, what if A in, is in between? Then the whole solution actually is not working because this uh, uh, square root cannot be extracted. But if A is in between, all you can say is that for minus 2, A plus 2, you have x from minus pi over 2 to 0. So all this part, if A is in between these two values, then it doesn't really intersect the graphs, which means everything which below 
is this whole piece. So that's what we have as a solution. So these three cases. Now, how to get the complete solution? Add pi n to each one of those, basically, because we have to add the period. So this is a complete solution. Depending on A, we have come up with different formulas, different intervals, and um, then we added the period. But uh, the, the principle is basically the same. Uh, if I would like to find out where some expression is, let's say, less or equal to A, I try to graph this expression more or less approximately, I'm not saying it's exact, and then intersect it with y equals to a and see on which side values are located in this case. Okay, let's move on. Well, as you see, it's not really very difficult, but it's involved. There are certain calculations, and you have to consider certain cases. It requires certain accuracy, and I'm not sure I'm perfect in this, but anyway, trying. Um, okay, now, next one. 6 cosine square x plus 5 sine x less than or equal to 7. Again, the problem is we have a mixture of different trigonometric functions. However, it's obvious that cosine square can be converted into sine square, and then you will get a, a situation which is relatively similar to whatever was in the previous problem. We have a quadratic um, uh, inequality, so it's 6 minus 6 sine square of x plus 5 sine, uh, sine of x less than equals to 7. So it's a quadratic inequality which we know how to solve. We will call sine of x v, and what I will have is, it would be minus 6 v squared plus 5v minus 1, because this is 7, this is 6, less than or equal to 0. Or I like to have plus at, uh, at the square, so I will have 6v squared minus 5v plus 1 greater than or equal to 0, right? I reverse the sign of the left part and reverse the equation to the, uh, to the opposite one. Now, what is this? This is a parabola, right? Directed upwards. So all we need to know are two values where it intersects the uh, x-axis. So it's basically the solutions to the equation, to this equation. All right, so what are the solutions? Uh, 12, 5 plus minus square root 25 minus 4 times 24. So this is 5 plus minus 1 over 12. Uh, so I have, if it's minus, it's 4, so it's 1 third and 1 half. One half and one third. Two solutions. So, how can I use this? Well, basically, if I'm looking for something of this particular uh, 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 polynomial to be greater than zero, it's quadratic polynomial, it's parabola. Greater means it's left from the left solution and to the right from the right solution, right? Again, parabola. So it would be to the left and to the right of this. So that's the uh, that's where my parabola is positive. So what it goes to is the following. It's sine of x is less or equal than the smallest one. That's one group of solutions and sine of x is 
greater or equal than one half. That's another group of solutions. Right? Now let's go to the graphic. Now it's easier. So, from minus pi to pi, um, sine goes like this. Right? This is minus 1, this is 1, and we are interested in 1 half and 1 third. So, one group of solution is less than 1 third. Now, this is 1 third, this is 1 half. So less than one, one third is everything from minus pi to this point and from this point to pi, right? So from minus pi to this point. This is obviously arc sine of one third. That's one interval. And the second interval greater than this particular point. Now, this particular point is pi minus arc sine of one third and ends at pi. By the way, I specify the interval as two numbers, the left and the right part, and the square bracket means it's including the uh, endpoints. If it's not including, like in, in case of tangent, I use the round uh, parentheses. Now, what about one half? That's yet another solution. So here we have greater than. So it means it's in between these two things, from here to here. So this is obviously arc sine of one half. And this one is pi minus arc sine of one half. So these three uh, intervals within, so it's this one, and then the middle one, and the small one. These three intervals represent the solution on the interval of periodicity from minus pi to pi. So to get the complete solution, you have to add 2 pi n to each one of them. Both ends, obviously. Well, that's it. By the way, in this case, as in the previous case, what I did, I have reduced my original inequality, which involved different trigonometric functions, to a quadratic inequality in terms of one particular um, uh, trigonometric function. In case, the first one was tangent, the second one was sine, but in both cases, I have obtained, from analyzing the quadratic uh, inequality, I have obtained the condition, a very simple condition in this case, on the original trigonometric function, on tangent or a sine. And then that I have converted into the uh, interval for x, which was supposed to be. Next one. It's kind of similar, by the way, so far. This was also be similar. Now, um, as usual, I don't remember the formula for sine of 3x, but I do remember it's something like some number multiplied by sine x and some number multiplied by sine of 3x. So I'm going to uh, uh, obtain this formula right now. But why am I talking about this? Well, because if this is a combination of sine and sine cube of x multiplied by sine, it will be sine square and sine to the fourth degree which brings me to the point that it would be uh, almost a quadratic equation, but in, instead of having uh, just an independent variable, I will have sine square as an um, a, a intermediate variable. So let's see. First of all, I don't remember, as I said, sine of 3x. Let me just derive it. Uh, so it's sine of x plus 2x, right? So it's sine of x times cosine of 2x which is cosine square x minus sine square x uh, plus uh, cosine of x 
times sine of 2x, which is 2 sine x cosine x. And uh, cosine square I will also convert into 1 minus sine square. 1 minus sine square x. So I have here 1 minus sine, minus 2 sine square. So if I multiply by sine, it will be sine x minus 2 sine qx plus 2 sine x times cosine square, uh, which is 1 minus sine square, equals sine square, uh, sine x, and 2 sine x would be 3 sine x minus 2 sine cube and minus 2 sine cube. So it's minus 4 sine cube. That's where it is. Okay, so I will use it here. I will use this. This is completely uh, invariant transformation. So I will have sine x times this, which is this, which would be 3 sine square x minus 4 sine to the 4 x uh, less than minus 716 by quadratic equation, right? So what I'm doing here right now is quite obvious. I will put sine square equals to v. And what do I have? I have minus 4 v square plus 3 v uh, let's put it here, plus 716 less than or equal to 0, right? That's my equation. Well, again, I prefer to have the positive coefficient at v squared, so I will have, my, uh, I will have plus 4 v squared minus 3v minus 716 greater than, than or equal to 0. So I reverse the sign here, and I reverse the um, the sign of inequality. Okay, first what we have to do, how to determine um, the points where this particular parabola is greater than zero, it's left to the left uh, solution when it's equal to zero and to the right from the right solution, right? So we need two solutions uh, of the corresponding equation. So it's eight, uh, this is three plus minus square root of nine minus, so it's plus, because it's minus, 4 times this times this, 4 times 4 is 16, this is 16, so it's just 7, right? 9 plus 7 is 16, square root is 4, so that's what I have. Which is minus 1 eighth and 7 eighths. And this is sine square. Now, when this particular parabola is greater than 0, when v is less than or equal to minus 8, and v is greater than 7 eighths, right? Now, can sine square be less than 1 eighth? No. That's positive thing, or 0, but not less than one, minus 1 eighth, right? So, this is not bring, this does not bring us any solutions. This one does. So we have to analyze basically the very simple inequality sine square greater than 7 eighths. That's what we have reduced our problem to. Now, how to solve this? Well, there are many ways. Obviously, you can extract square root. Uh, actually, I prefer to do something, I think, a little smarter. Remember, cosine of 2x is equal to cosine square minus sine square, or 1 minus 2 sine square x, right? So sine square x is equal to what? Uh, 1 half 1 minus cosine of 2x. Correct? 
cosine square minus sine square. Cosine is 1 minus sine, so it's 1 minus 2 sine squares. And if I resolve it for sine square, it would be here. Cosine will be there, 1 minus, yes. So, uh, and that's invariant transformation. So I will do this, 1 half. 1 minus cosine of 2x greater than 7 eighths. Well, that's easier because there is no square here, right? Okay, uh, so it's 1 half minus 1 half cosine 2, 2x greater than 7 eighths uh, times 8, right? So it's 8, uh, no, that's 4. 4 minus um, 4 cosine of 2x greater than equal to 7. 4 cosine of 2x, it's here. It's less than or equal than minus 3. So cosine of 2x less than minus 3 quarter. And this we know how to solve for 2x. And then we'll just divide by 2, right? All right, so let's solve it. And that will be the end of it. Now, when is cosine of 2x is less than uh, 3 quarters? Minus, sorry, minus three quarters. So, um, let's say this is my cosine. Uh, zero to two pi. This is pi. This is pi over two. This is three pi over two. Now, minus three quarter is here. We need less than minus three quarters, right? So it's from this point to this point, this interval. Now, this is arc cosine of minus three quarters, right? Because arc cosine is defined on this. It's angle cosine of which is equal to minus three quarters. Correct? Now, um, I can actually do it uh, this way. So it's from arc cosine of minus three quarters to this point. Now, if this is arc cosine of three quarters, of minus three quarters, sorry, this is two pi minus, because these are symmetrical, right? So to two pi minus arc cosine of minus three quarters. So that's the solution. And uh, adding 2 pi to both sides will give you the complete solution. Well, that's it. Um, was it difficult? Um, I don't know. It's a little tedious, I would say, because you have to really um, first uh, transform your original trigonometric inequality, which contains multiple trigonometric functions, into something more bearable uh, with one trigonometric function, but not the simple one, but something like a quadratic inequality, where the one and only one trigonometric function is uh, the argument. So in the first problem, there was a tangent. In the second problem, it was sine. And in the third problem, it was sine squared. Uh, and then, after you solve the quadratic inequality, basically by um, obtaining some kind of a condition on the argument, and argument is not original x, it's like tangent x or sine x or sine square x, etc. 
you basically analyze the second uh, wave of uh, inequalities and, and, and the third, if it's necessary, whatever. So by substitution, you reduce the pro pro problem further and further down to the elementary basic level of style like sine of x less than whatever. So that's the methodology. Hopefully it works. And uh, all which is required for you is to see what kind of transformation you should do with the original uh, inequality, which is a mixture of God knows what, um, how to transform it into something more palatable, more um, understandable, uh, which, which can be resolved in steps. So you reduce your complex problem to two, three, or four, or whatever number, uh, more, more simple problems. And that's, that's basically the approach to an entire world. Whenever you have a complex problem, reduce it to a combination of a small ones, and that would definitely do the trick. Well, that's why mathematicians are um, the best people who can solve the problems when nobody really knows what to do, because they're trained to, to think outside of the box. They don't know the algorithm, they come up, they, they come up with algorithms. And that's what this course is supposed to teach you, I hope. All right. Um, don't forget, unisor.com is the website which allows you to um, register, pass exams, um, enroll uh, into different topics, basically to do this uh, um, controlled educational environment. I definitely encourage you to, to, to register and to take exams, etc. So thank you very much. Try to um, repeat these uh, calculations, these solutions yourself. That's very important. So you'll go again through the same problems. If you can do it by yourself, great. And good luck. Thank you.